Hello everyone, welcome to Tactica Imperialis and to today's video. Today is going to be another My Thoughts On, and this is a video I've been meaning to make for months, actually, because we're going to go back to November, and I want to do My Thoughts On Warhammer The Old World. I'm not going to do a scroll through article discussion because there's not a lot there really to talk about in terms of raw information. I just want to talk about Warhammer the Old World in general because, well, obviously. So, context for those who are either new to the hobby or can't remember two months ago for whatever reason. Warhammer Fantasy died back in 2015 and from the ashes came the Age of Sigma. Age of Sigma has gone on to do a lot of things, some of them very well, some of them arguably not so well. But Age of Sigma has proved, particularly in the last couple of years and with the second edition, to be very popular and very successful. And in the back end of 2019, Games Workshop announced that they were going to be doing Warhammer Fantasy The Old World, or Warhammer The Old World, as its official name is. I'm going to call it Fantasy The Old World a lot because of just bad habits. What this essentially is, is a reboot of Warhammer Fantasy Battles. So the old game that died in 2015 is going to make at least some form of a comeback. What exact form that comeback will take, we're not 100% sure. We've had no information as to um, the rule set, as to gameplay mechanics, as to anything really. We just know that it is the old world, and we know that Square bases are making their return. Yes, you old fantasy people, and I technically count as one of them, sort of. Square bases, which some of you will probably still have on your old miniatures, even if you converted them across to AOS, Square bases have returned, which is absolutely lovely, uh, because Square bases make ranking up units very easy, makes movement trades very easy, and it makes grand scale battles very easy to keep track of because you can rank your units up. So with this video, I wanted to sort of talk about my thoughts on having this thing back in general. Like, What do I think of the fact that we have Warhammer the Old World? And what do I think about how it's going to take shape? Because GW themselves say that this is not going to be a short term project. This is like the Sisters of Battle, but bigger. So we'll be getting passive updates from time to time, and I believe, if I recall correctly, it's a Forge World-led project, but it's going to, or maybe not a Forge World, but certainly a project that would probably be influenced by Forge World. Um, but they do say it's going to take a long time. This isn't something that's gonna happen just around the corner. Um, they talk about the fact it's probably gonna be two at least more like three or more years until we see it so it's probably going to be 2022 2023 before we even see this game see the light of day um but there's a lot that could come along so first off the tldr what do i think of warhammer the old world as a concept honestly i am really pleased i am apprehensive in some ways, but I'm really, really pleased because it proves two things. One, the love for fantasy never went away. Many of you who've been around long enough will remember the person who burnt their army in protest at the death of fantasy. Uh, that person probably feels very silly if they're still following the hobby today uh, because their old game is sort of making a comeback. But there is a passion within the fan base for Warhammer Fantasy. And we see this as well through the video games. Warhammer Total War and Total War Warhammer 2 have proved to be exceptionally popular. Total War Warhammer 2 is still getting updates today, even though Three Kingdoms has been out and had a DLC pack or two. Warhammer 2 is still growing and is still, it's probably the biggest Total War game on record in terms of sheer volume of stuff in the game. Plus you've got Vermintide, the Left for Dead style games. Uh, if you follow Snipe and Wib, you'll definitely see this. Uh, and it's a really popular game as well, showing that the appetite for the old world, at least in some ways, 
is still there. That hasn't gone away. When old characters from the old world, or the world that was, make their debut or their return in the mortal realms, there is generally quite a lot of hype. The return of Marathi, the return that's upcoming of Teclis, the reference to Setra that probably wasn't Setra, and Ikit Claw that probably wasn't Ikit Claw in the Hamilcar Champion of the Gods novel. All of these old characters still remain very, very popular because of the history of the old world and of Warhammer Fantasy. So the appetite is still there, and that shows by the fact that GW feels they could put the game back out and people would go for it. Secondly, it proves the popularity of Age of Sigmar, because I don't think that a fantasy reboot was something GW had planned when they released Age of Sigmar. I feel like at the time, and probably for a couple of years afterward, they were quite happy to say, right, fantasy's in the past, now we have Age of Sigmar. Two connected games, but one is the past, one is the future, and that's that. The fact that they're talking about this being a long-term project, that they are seemingly starting now, when normally they work several months, if not years in advance of Games Workshop in terms of releases, tells you that this is not something that they started back in 2015. They've been able to build the old world game that they're going to build because Sigmar has proved so popular that it's introduced a brand new, massive player base to the fantasy game that in some ways is eclipsing Warhammer 40,000. It's not bigger than Warhammer 40,000, not even close. But in some ways it is proving more popular than Warhammer 40,000, probably in terms of its simplicity, and in its model design in many ways. I think it is actually better than 40k. So it's drawing in a huge fan base and making huge amounts of money, which means that GW could afford to put out a loss-making game, which is probably what fantasy would be, theoretically. Maybe this new version would be a profit maker, but they could afford to run fantasy, the old world, at a loss because of the popularity of Sigma that can prop it up and support a second game in its own universe even when that game once died, it had to be replaced. So that tells you Sigmar's doing well, there's an attitude and an appetite for fantasy as well, which is great. So what are we going to get for this game? What is Warhammer the Old World going to be? Well, that's hard to say, because we've had no hints, no inside information, nothing. All we know is square bases and the setting. That's it. And that's fine, because even from that, we can start to piece a few things together. They talk about the fact that this is the Horus Heresy to Age of Sigmar. So the Horus Heresy 30k game is to Warhammer 40,000 what Warhammer the Old World is going to be to Age of Sigmar. It's a prequel game. It's very different in terms of its rules design, particularly with the uh, Heresy and 8th edition divergence, where Heresy stayed with 7th edition and 40k went off into the 8th edition rule set, though obviously 7th edition is not quite 7th edition with Heresy, it's, it's different, but they've gone in very different rules directions. One is a direct prequel to the other, where events are predetermined, but there is still scope for telling stories within that setting, because obviously we know the old world died, Archaon killed it, but that doesn't mean there aren't more stories to tell. That doesn't mean there aren't new legends to forge. And the what if X had happened, could we rerun the end times? And maybe they'll put out a campaign series where you get to redo the end times to try and save the world that was from being destroyed by the forces of chaos. I don't know. I'm throwing ideas out there now. So that's going to suggest that we're going to have a very different rule set. And I suspect it will be very much a version, if not a carbon copy, a, definitely a version of the Warhammer Fantasy Battles formula. That is, ranks of units that move together and are staying ranks. You know, you've got flanks and rear charges um, and different modifiers based on that. You'll have pivot arcs. I think it will be a very fantasy style game. That probably is obvious, but I think it's worth saying. Whether they will copy Fantasy 8th edition verbatim remains to be seen. I'm thinking they won't, given how much development time they're going to give to this. But things like the old magic phase could make a return. 
where you wizards have a spell bank and they roll power dice and you have dispel dice. Famously, that's a very broken system and a very difficult to balance system, but they might go back to it. You might see artillery becoming a lot more prominent again. Um, and using war machines is very different to how you use them in Age of Sigma. The game could be a lot more slower paced and about crunching and grinding through battle lines rather than smash and grab for objectives, which is what Sigma can be like, not necessarily what it is like, but what it can be like. It's not about that grinding attritional warfare of ranks of infantry crashing into each other, critical cavalry charges, magical support, monstrous heroes being exceptionally tanky, and basically lasting the whole game on six wounds. Um, yes, for you Age of Sigma players, six wounds was quite a lot back in these days. This 14 wounds nonsense, no, that wasn't a thing. Uh, because multiple damage was very rare. Um, armor piercing and rend was a lot rarer. Um, but armor saves were generally quite weak as a result. Uh, ward saves were a thing. So the saves that you get after saves. Mortal wounds were not a thing. Uh, as well. Ward saves, I believe, were save after were save after save, which I think they are now as well. It's it's a very different system. And if you've never seen Fantasy Eighth Edition or Warhammer Fantasy Battles in general, it could be a real eye opener for you to go back and look at it and say, "Is this what we're gonna get?" But I think what they will do is they'll peel back a bit on the complexity of Warhammer the Old World. That's not to say it won't be complicated with. Universal special rules probably making a return rather than sticking on the War Scroll datasheet system of the modern systems. Um, I think we'll see more variety and complexity in terms of the rules compared to Sigma, which has eight pages of core rules. But I think they will peel it back a little so that the Sigma crowd aren't put off immediately by what I have to learn 80 pages of rules as well as my army's rules that refer back to this and that and watch them call it, I think they'll pair it back a little bit. Not much, but I think they'll pair it back a little bit. Because Heresy is probably more complicated than 8th edition in some ways, but it's also not in other ways. And I think they'll do the same here. The other really interesting aspect, and probably the biggest aspect of interest for me, is the miniatures. Because the story of the old world is... Fine, I never engaged with it the same way I did with Mortal Realms or with 140,000. The rules are the rules, and whether they're fantasy light, AOS light, a hybridization, or just carbon copy old fantasy, I don't know, but I can't really say, and I think I'm open to trying them all. Where the real interest for me lies in the miniatures, because Age of Sigma has brought out a bunch of new races, but it's also reduxed and retired a lot of old ones. So Cities of Sigmar allowed the Empire some Dispossessed, some Dark Elves, some Dwarves, some Wood Elves, some Dark Elves, um, some High Elves, very few High Elves, and the odd thing from here or there to come together and be reborn inside the Mortal Realms. The Daughters of Cain took an existing range from Warhammer Fantasy, that being the Witch Elves and the Blood Rack Medusa, and expanded on it with the Melisai and the Kinnerai and Marathi herself uh, to make the Daughters of Cain, as opposed to a very small subgroup of units. Um, and so, what are they going to do with the miniatures? Because no AOS miniature, like the Stormcast Eternals, the Night Haunt, uh, the Ideneth Deepkin, can be retroactively dropped into Fantasy of the Old World. But they've also ceased production on a lot of armies. So Tomb Kings, gone. Britannia, gone. Most of the High Elves range, gone. Unless Teclis brings them all back. We'll see about that one. A lot of miniatures have been, well, I, we used to say squatted because of the squats being removed from all canon. But I think the best word for them is Tomb Kings now, where they were moved from existence and they ceased to be a thing in the current setting. And so... Are they going to recast the old miniatures and launch them again as new old kits for people to buy? Are they going to launch a brand new line of miniatures to redux the classic fantasy miniatures in the new techniques? Like, Are they going to redo the Tomb Kings and jazz them up a bit without treading on the toes of the Ossiart Bone Reapers? 
Are they going to um, revive the old High Elf unit so that they're there, but if they're also there under the rule of Teclas, but they're slightly different in his new faction of Pointy Elves, what's going to be in, what's going to be out? Because I expect this to be a full reboot where most, if not all, factions return. So who, how are they going to do the miniatures? I'd like to see new casts for classic heroes and classic units, but I think that might be asking for a lot for what is essentially a prequel spin-off game. We've seen the Horus Heresy do it, and when the Horus Heresy series reaches its natural end, it would be nice for Forge World to pick up the fantasy range and produce it as their newest ongoing project so that they've got something to do and they can provide the miniatures for Fantasy of the Old World. We will see exactly how it pans out, but I'm excited to see new miniatures for old heroes. I think we'll get the odd one. I'm not sure if we're going to get full reboots of most armies and ranges. I think that might be asking a bit much, but I'd be excited to see it. So we will see. Beyond that, I don't have a lot to say because there isn't a lot to talk about. Um, we know the setting, we know the base system, that's it. Everything else has been speculation and I am really excited for it. Admittedly, I'll forget about it probably for about 18 months and then I'll start talking about it again and I'll start building up hype. But I will hold my hand up. I wasn't that into fantasy. I was very much into 40k when I was younger, around 2014, 2015 when fantasy died. I was a lot more into 40k. I had a fantasy army, my high elves, but I wasn't into fantasy the same way. I didn't engage with it. I don't know if I found it too complicated. I just didn't have opponents very often. Whatever it was, I could never engage with fantasy. And even when the end times were happening and I was following it a bit more closely, I didn't care that much. So I have to hold my hand up and say, I'm part of the contributing reason why fantasy died. I played the game a bit, but I didn't care enough to really fight for it and drive it forward. And whilst I alone couldn't have saved the game, I'm not saying that at all. I'm one of the people who didn't do a lot to save it. And it will be interesting to see the old hands come back and how they react to this new system, whether they pick it up and run with it, or whether they just dabble, or whether they say, you know what, there's too much bad blood for you killing fantasy the first time, I'm done, I'm out. We'll see. Because I don't want the old world to be retired again. I want this game to succeed where its predecessor ran out of steam and had to be revived and replaced. I want this game to succeed, but I'm fully aware that the last time I engaged with a system that's a bit like this, whether it's a carbon copy or not, the last time I engaged with it, I wasn't that into it. I was either confused or I was just more interested in the sci-fi or I was bored or whatever else. I'm conscious of that. And I really hope that fantasy that Warhammer the Old World does something to change my mind. Maybe because I'm older now, I'll be better able to appreciate what it's actually trying to do with its complexity um, and depth and variance, which I've come to appreciate about Sigma, about how in-depth some of the strategizing and combination actually is, even if the rules seem quite surface level basic. So hopefully I'll find a better appreciation for this game. And I'm really looking forward to trying it when it comes around uh, in a couple of years. But that's just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you pro Warhammer the Old World? Are you anti Warhammer the Old World? Do you just not care because you're a 40k diehard or a Sigma diehard who has nothing to do with what came before? Are you one of those people who walked away from Sigma because it wasn't fantasy and are you now interested in coming back because fantasy's back or are you still too jaded I don't want to say salt is the wrong word, too fed up and have to have bad blood with G-dubs to ever go back to a fantasy system because you don't trust them. I'm always interested in what you have to say. And this topic is a really interesting one going forward. So let me know your thoughts. I'm very interested. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. This has been Tacticate Imperialis, and these have been my thoughts on Warhammer the Old World. Thank you very much. Bye for now.